Yahitir Maya. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my greenhouse. Come in. This video is in partnership with Epidemic Sound and Adobe Stock. I literally have been using both of these brands for years. I'm talking years and years and years. I will have the link in the info box below, but I did a collaboration with them on their platform for a campaign called Storytelling Smooth. To see how easy it is to edit directly with Epidemic Sounds music in Adobe Stock, make sure you head over to their channel. Link in the info box below. Also, fun fact, Epidemic Sound, I was over in their headquarters the first time I came here to Sweden. They're based in Stockholm. And so when this opportunity came about, when I had just arrived in Sweden, it was so, it was like, uh, and the synchronicity was just like amazing. So this is a very authentic, organic partnership and I'm really, really excited to be working with them. Thank you. Now back into this video. This is the greenhouse, otherwise known as the rainbow room. She's serving you some rainbows, some splashes of color. You know I love my color. Uh, what I love about this greenhouse is it serves as a dining room for our little house on the prairie, on the countryside. She's bite size. She's so tiny. <laughs> I've lived in cities and this is by far the tiniest. Is it even smaller than my New York apartment? It is. Uh, this is a one bedroom and so this serves as our dining room we like to have our breakfast lunch and dinner here it also serves as an area that we can read i do my swedish lessons in here and it's super cute when it's raining or even foggy like today and you just get to be warmed by the heater that we installed now the space let me break down the space for you i have little splashes of maya I had this idea of having a huge cross collection, um, but these are from my travels to uh, Colombia and Mexico. And I love the colors. I actually had this painting I just put here. This was in the guest house and this is very personal to me. I bought this 13 years ago in Vancouver. And what I loved about it was there were bugs in her hair and I cannot stand bugs. I think they're disgusting. I have like a major phobia. I'm a lot better these days. Um, but yeah, I have a major phobia and I love the fact that she has beautiful hair with bugs and it's as if she's embracing her fears. So that's what this means to me. That's why I copped it. And I think it's actually kind of cute here. These chairs I got from Ikea. Um, these pillows we got from a thrift store. Um, the chairs are from a thrift store as well. I got this, I got two actually. One is from Mexico, the other one is from... I think they're both from Mexico from separate trips. Um, I made these planters. If you follow me on Instagram, specifically Instagram stories, you'll see that I made this. I, I don't have a video on how to. Uh, I literally just make it up as I go. Uh, but you just cut wood. We have a bunch of scrap wood back there and just screws, long screws, lots of mistakes. <laughs> Make things add up, figure it out as you go. I'm sure there's a video on YouTube on how to do this. But I made these three and what I wanted with them was a kind of waterfall effect from shortest to the tallest and the shortest plant here and the tallest plant. So I, I had foresight. I knew the tomatoes would get tall, so I put them on the ground and I knew the kale wouldn't be that tall. So they kind of even out in terms of height. These are tomatoes. They're growing so tall and so heavy. I don't plan these things. I just work with what I have. I happen to have some strings, so I started to like string them up. And if they're really heavy, I use some cloth to make sure that string doesn't cut into their stems. Um, but you could use like old leggings or old fabric to like wrap them. But these are the tomatoes. <laughs> and here is the cayenne pepper. The cayenne peppers be out here. There's a lot of them over here. These ones are flowering. And I have a tip about that coming up. Kale, we've eaten some of the kale. You have to be very careful when you eat this kale. They got little, little homies that like to hang out on the back. It's like little cocoon things. And I'm like, oh, nature, gross. Oh. So I wash them off and I have to like scrub them off. 
Um, these ones are kind of dying because there's not enough sun. So I was thinking about getting some infrared lights because they need more sun. Moving on. <laughs> this is the basil. We've got basil. We have some cilantro. Um, I never knew basil flowered and they smell so good. They're so sweet. So I've never bought um, basil essential oil and now I'm like, should I? Maybe I should. Um, my kitchen cuttings. This is celery from the juices I do. So I cut the whole thing and then I'm left with this little butt and I just put it in water. And once it has enough roots, I plant it in soil. Like, look at this one. I'm about to juice you. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, I asked you guys on IG stories what questions you had and you had a, <laughs> and you had a bunch of really good questions. Um, one of them being, how do you plan to keep it warm during the winter? I don't know. Uh, this is our first few months here. Uh, I did look online and some of the tips that I got was using bubble wrap. So if you do have a greenhouse or are planning to build one, if you are ordering things online, keep your bubble wrap. Keep it and then start, <laughs> that's what my plan was, to start saving it and putting it here in between the panels. So the the plastic bubble wrap will act as an insulation and a buffer between the cold glass and the air in here. Also, um, composting, if you have any kind of compost, you can keep it in here. You can do like a small version one. Again, these are things that I was thinking about doing because the compost gives off heat. If you have like a hot compost or like a warm compost, you'll have some heat from that. Um, so that was a few of your questions. I didn't build this, it came with the house. So, and I didn't even paint it. They know my colors, so that's great. <laughs> uh, fertilizer, what do I use? So, regular soil. You can start there. Uh, I do have two compost going that won't be ready for a year. So in between then, I've been using charcoal, not charcoal, ashes, wood ashes from our wooden fireplace. So I use this ash and I sprinkle it on the bottom of the vegetables. You can also use grass clippings or um, the clippings from the leaves. Like the tomatoes get so bushy and it really is helpful to prune off extra leaves because it, one, the plant is consuming a lot of energy. And the more leaves, the more branches, the more energy it's going to the leaves and not so much going to the fruit. So it's good to give it a little haircut. And with those leaves, I just, I put them here on top. You can compost it or you could just throw it on top and water it. And the nutrients from the leaves, from the ash, they will break down and give your plant some nutrients. Eggshells, coffee grinds, all of it. You can put all of this back into your plant. So I have like a, a, a mortar thingy that I put the eggs in and I just grind them up and I, I put them in there. I haven't done it with this. There's just like, there's so much stuff going in there. I got leaves, I got ashes, and I also have eggshells. So I, I will break this down and put that in the soil. Um, but that's also good. It's always good to add nutrients in addition to um, the soil. Like you don't want to just use store-bought fertilizer. You could also, fun fact, use your own golden shower. So what you do, right? <laughs> I'm using an accent because it's awkward. <laughs> you pee into a bucket and you dilute your pee with water. There are specific ratios online, but basically your urine has nitrogen and plants need nitrogen. You don't want to burn them, so you would dilute it with your golden shower. And that also informs the plant. Not only does it give them nutrients, it, it informs them on what you're lacking. Now, people are going to debate me on this, and that's fine. I don't care. But some fun information I discovered is plants are so smart. They can tell what you're lacking and what you're deficient in. So the more you give of yourself to your plant, the more your plant will produce fruit that's right for you. So obviously this is only beneficial for you and your garden. You don't want to be a farmer peeing on plants because that becomes like a health hazard or whatever. Um, 
So again, if it's your own garden, your own greenhouse, you're going to be eating it for yourself and your family. I don't see the harm in it. That's what I've been doing. And yeah, we have neem oil, natural dish soap, and water. If you have your plants being attacked by leaf eaters, this is going to be the secret remedy. It's all natural and you mix it. This is organic cold press extra virgin neem oil and you mix it in a spray bottle as such you can mix it in a spray bottle or if you're like me because you have a lot of plants i have a bunch of plants outside you mix it in one of these again i'll link some videos that have like a breakdown but you mix it in here and you spray your plants down so if you see plants being eaten this works for not just your garden plants but your indoor plants neem oil is the jam I can't stress that enough oh hand pollination this tip is clutch ladies you have makeup brushes i know you do i know you do instead of throwing them out wash them keep them and use it to hand pollinate your fruits and your vegetables if you find that your plants are not bearing fruit the chances could be that the bees are not pollinating. So what you want to do is take your makeup brush and hand pollinate. Oh. Not this one, another one. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to hand pollinate gently. And we have a cucumber that was not bearing any cucumbers. And I asked my farmer friend, who's an organic farmer who lives down the road. He's been doing this for six years. And he's like, you probably don't have any bees pollinating. So yeah. And now, like I did that to these plants and look at them. Now there's so many compared to one. This is also helpful if you have fruits and vegetables that are rotting for no reason. Um, a lot of people think it's the soil. It could be the soil, but it could also be lack of pollination. This is clutch. This is clutch for free. <laughs> Free information. That is it from me from the greenhouse, the rainbow room. If you have more questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm new to this. The more I learn, the more I'll share. So let me know in the comments below. If you have any tips on gardening, on greenhouses, share them in the comments below. We're all gonna be out here, me too, taking notes. That's it for me, booze. Until next time, remember to do you, be you, and stay true. Be shameless, be green, be healthy, be one.